Hello everyone, it's 11.03 on Saturday, June 3rd, 2017. Now we are headed to the Bach House. You see, while I came to this town solely for Wartburg Castle, it turns out Eisenach is also the birthplace of the famous Johann Sebastian Bach. So they have the house in which he was born preserved as a memorial to him. This window, now encased within an interior wall, is part of the original 1455-56 construction of the Bach House. Yes, this wood predates the discovery of our continent by Columbus. This settee is a 2003 replica of a 1727 original from Pilnitz Palace. The sign says I can sit here, so... I am taking a load off for a second. Anyway, it's 1314 now, and while I'd rather film my brief history of the Bach House from outside, so you can see it while I'm filming, I'm doing it here because it's quiet and deserted, and so I wanna do it in case it's either too rainy or too crowded to do it outside later when I get out. Anyway, Bach House is actually two houses. The first built in 1456, the second built in 1458, which then later in the year 1611 were joined into one large house. The museum itself was opened in 1907 by a Bach Appreciation Society based in Leipzig that included Franz Liszt and several other famous composers of which I have not heard. It was believed with certainty at the time that this building was where Bach was born in March of 1685. I say it that way because modern research suggests that it may actually have been a different house that the Bachs actually moved to. But as I said, this house does date from the proper time period and it is on the proper street. So it's very close to where he was born and is an authentic relic of the late 17th slash early 18th centuries that were the composer's lifetime. Though, as I said, being built in the 15th century, the house is much older than the composer. Composer. Anyway, let us continue. And across the garden, we have this house built in 1456, which was rented by Bach's parents from 1671 to 1674 until they purchased their own house. This little booklet is from the reopening of the School of St. Thomas in 1732, which included a performance of a Bach cantata, but I'm mostly filming it for the fact that the text was written by Johann Heinrich Winkler, who was the first to have the idea of using conducted electricity for the means of telegraphy, which is pretty cool. This here is Bach's library. None of these books are originally owned by Bach, but most of them are quote-unquote originals that is, copies of the books from the 16-1700s, exactly like the ones he would have owned, though a few of them are facsimiles. Anyway, that this is only a small selection of the massive library of his house. The Bach House does own a copy of every single book owned by Johann Sebastian, according to the list made at the resolving of his estate after his death. Though the only book originally owned by Bach that we have, the copy that was owned by Bach himself, is his Lutheran Bible, heavily annotated in the margins by the man himself. And unfortunately, that is not here, because it was taken to St. Louis at some point by an immigrant, and therefore can be seen in that city. Bach owned 51 titles in 81 volumes. One of Pfeiffer's books is his Anti-Melancholicus, or Banisher of Melancholy. In it, Bach could read, Why are you complaining about how you are not recognized by those above you? About the thanklessness of the world? See to it that you only please God in heaven. Let people think of you what they will. And that concludes my tour of the Bach House at 1640 local time. Well, the underground said it's going to be thunderstorming off and on all day, and the clouds do certainly look like rain, but I have not heard any severe thunder or lightning, though I was listening to music for the majority of the time I was in there. Which is a note if you ever plan to visit this place yourself. You can spend hours and hours, probably the entire time, from opening at 10 a.m. to closing at 6, just listening to music compositions by him on their headphone sets and also the audio programs they have about him. I probably got through about half 
Now note that I said it closes at 6, but I'm leaving even though I'm not done. That's because I have a train to catch. Literally the instant I closed the camera, this started happening. Well, this backpack is supposedly water resistant, and this shirt dries really quickly, which is why I wore it, since I knew it was going to be raining today, so this will not deter me. Hopefully I won't regret this decision. Remember that neat little arc I took y'all through on the first day here? Turns out that's part of Nicolas Kirche, one of the oldest surviving churches in town. Been seeing it mentioned on old city maps and stuff. That'll just have to be one of the things that I come back later in life and see and there's a lot of those in this town. The thing I'd most want to come back for is the Auto Museum. There have been cars manufactured in Eisenach since 1898, up until 1891 in the old factory, and then Opel built a new one in 92. After the first one closed following the reunification of Germany, also somewhere in this town is the house where Luther went to school when he was a child, not for his entire childhood, just for part of his time. Exact dates, uh, probably flashing or s rather steadily shining on screen. And also that giant monument on the hill that you could see from the castle. It's not too far outside of town, and I would walk to it if I had time. But as I said, there's a train to catch, and that's the station. I actually don't have to be there until like 5.30. 5.45-ish for the departure at 5.50, but the app said the worst of the storming is going to be right around 5, 5.15, so I was gonna get here early in hopes of staying dry, but obviously that didn't quite work. Still, it's nice and warm, and I feel much better now instead of just walking in the hot, muggy humidity like I have been. Field tests have concluded that it is water-resistant in the same way that any piece of cloth is. I mean, I think my legs are less wet than the immediate inside of this case. Luckily, the only things in here that would be affected by the water are my computer, which had the foresight to shield in a layer of plastic, though it's not securely wrapped. Hopefully it didn't come open. To the other electronics, which are encased in the towel, so they should be fine. The inside seems pretty much dry, just where the inside meets the outside is pretty wet. Anyway. Sicherheitshinweis. Lassen Sie Ihr Gepäck nicht unbeaufsichtigt. Ja. 693 nach München Hauptbahnhof. Due to the significant delay, I missed my connection here in Fulda, and am therefore forced to take a different route to my destination. That destination is Nuremberg, which I picked because it's on the way from Eisenach to Munich, and I'm headed to Munich to meet a friend on the 5th, that is, Monday. Slight wrinkle in plans, but hey, that's traveling for you. So yeah, now I have to sit here for 40 minutes, but fortunately, I have a very good book to read. I read most of this for a class a while ago, but I'm only just now getting through to reading the chapters we skipped then. I haven't yet finished it, but I can already say, highly recommend. and I've made it to Nuremberg. As you can see, they have a very beautiful train station. Now all that remains is to see if I can follow the directions to the hostel. I said come out the main entrance, turn right, and walk 50 meters down the street. But there are like 10 different exits. But I did come out of that archway, which looks sufficiently main to me. So I'm fairly confident I'm going the right way. I did find it with no trouble, and so at 23.10, just settling down for my first night here in Nuremberg. The adventure continues tomorrow. VM.